White Sox fans, this is your Sox Machine White Sox wake-up call for Thursday, August 31st, 2023. Happy National Trail Mix Day, I'm Bennett Carroll. Yesterday, the Chicago White Sox avoided a sweep with a getaway day win over the Baltimore Orioles. The Sox led off the first against uh, old friend Kyle Gibson and got it going how they usually do with a 1-2-3 inning. On the other side, Dylan Cease was struggling to start out of the gate. Gunnar Henderson led off with a double, and Anthony Santander said, Thank you, sir. May I have another? Smoked a double down the right field line, sliding into second safely and bringing Henderson in to score. After a Ryan Mountcastle strikeout, Ryan O'Hearn singled up the middle, bringing Santander in to make it 2-0. After Cedric Mullins was hit by a pitch, Adam Frazier hit what is maybe the highest, furthest single to right you could imagine in Baltimore, hitting it high off the wall, right into the hands of a waiting Oscar Colas, who fired it into second. 3-0 Orioles after it brings in O'Hearn to score. After Frazier stole second, Jordan Westberg hit a lazy fly ball to center, where the Weiss swagged and fired it in. Cedric Mullins was a no doubt to score on the sack fly, but Andrew Vaughn, standing on the mound, intercepted the throw home and caught Frazier between bases, tracking him down and getting the throw to Tim for the tag and the exceedingly rare 8 3 6 double play. Because it was not a force play, the run still counts, so the score is 4 nothing O's after 1. Top 2, though, and the Sox are looking for a quick strike back. Eloy Jimenez led off with a single, setting the stage for Andrew Vaughn to crush a slider over the fence and right, cutting the lead in half and making it a 4-2 game. And the Sox didn't stop there. Yasmani Grandal singled to center, and after Elvis Andrew swapped places with him on a fielder's choice, Pedro Griffol's favorite player, Oscar Colas, turned on one and put it halfway up the seats in right center to make it a tie game, 4-4. In just five batters, the Sox had turned a sure loss into a real game once again. But the inning went quietly from there as Lenin Sosa popped out and Tim Anderson lined out. Bottom two and actual old friend James McCann got the inning started off right with a strikeout. Jorge Mateo followed with one of the same and Gunnar Henderson wrapped up a good bounce back inning for Cease with a ground out. Third inning kicks off and after an Andrew Benintendi ground out, the game was tied no more. Luis Robert, right field seats, Easy power for his 35th home run of the year, and we haven't even hit September yet. 5-4 Sox. And why stop there? Eloy Jimenez and Andrew Vaughn each doubled to bring Jimenez back around to score and make it 6-4. After Yasmani Grandal flew out, Elvis Andrews followed it with a single to center to make it 7-4 after Vaughn came in to score. Remember how dead in the water this game was an inning ago? Oscar Colas lined out to end the top of the third. And to really make it seem like this game might get crazy, Anthony Santander led off with a solo home run to right center to cut the lead to 7-5. But C settled down from there, getting a pair of strikeouts and a flyout to wrap the third inning. The game finally took a deep breath as the Sox went 1-2-3 in the top of the fourth and the O's managed just a single before Jorge Mateo then got picked off of first for the final out. To the fifth, after Luis Robert struck out, Eloy Jimenez singled to left to finally lift Kyle Gibson from the game. His final line, four and one-third innings, nine hits, seven runs, all earned, no walks, and two strikeouts. Gotta be really honest, with free agency coming up for him, he looks like a prime White Sox signing. 5.15 ERA. Austin Voth comes in and he gets Andrew Vaughn and Yasmani Grandal out to escape. Bottom five and after walking Gunnar Henderson, Cease gets Santander to pop out. A wild pitch moved Henderson to second, but that's as far as he would get as Ryan Mountcastle and Ryan O'Hearn both ground out to end the inning. 
We're in the sixth now, and Elvis Andrews leads off with a single. Oscar Colas draws a walk, bringing up Lenin Sosa, who drops a sacrifice bunt to put both runners in scoring position for Tim Anderson. Tim gets a seemingly sure just single to bounce through Cedric Mullen's two-hole, right under the glove, and roll all the way almost to the wall. When Tim finally stops running, he's on third, and both runs have scored as that sure single turned into a triple and extended the lead to 9-5. to five. But it wouldn't stay there long as Andrew Benintendi followed with a double to put the Sox up, well, double the O's score, 10-5. to five. Luis Robert and Eloy Jimenez struck out to end the inning. Bottom six and Cecil allowed a two-out walk and a wild pitch, but otherwise kept a lid on it. That would be the last inning he pitched, so his final line, six innings, six hits, five runs, all earned, three walks, and seven strikeouts. You do have to remember four of those runs came in a chaotic first inning. His ERA on the year, though, is 4.91. Seventh inning underway, and the Sox are facing D.L. Hall. Fun fact, I saw him pitch once for the Frederick Keys. I think that's fun. Hall gives up a one-out single to Yasmani Grandal and walks Elvis Andrews behind him. That puts two on for Oscar Colas, who strikes out, and Lenin Sosa, who lines out to end the inning. Bottom seven and Jimmy Lambert is in. He gives a leadoff single up to Jorge Mateo, but proceeds to get Gunnar Henderson to go 4-6-3 for the double play to erase it. Anthony Santander would then pop out to end the inning. We're in the eighth now, and after a quick pair of outs, Luis Robert and Eloy Jimenez each single, putting two on for Andrew Vaughn, who grounds out to end it. Bottom eight and the O's go down one, two, three to Lambert. Final inning, and Jacob Webb gives up the double-dreaded double leadoff walk, putting two socks on with nobody out. But the team goes fly out, fly out, strike out to end the inning without a run. Gregory Santos is in for the Sox to wrap the game up, and the O's are on him early. Adam Frazier and Jordan Westberg each singled, putting two on, but Santos settled in and got James McCann to strike out and pinch hitter Adley Rutschman to ground into a double play, 4-6-3, to end the game. Sox win 10-5. Some notes from the box score, Eloy Jimenez had the best day of the team, going 4-for-5 with a double. He was one of five Sox hitters to have multiple hits. Lenin Sosa was the only Sox hitter to go hitless on an 0-for-4 day. In other White Sox news, with an off day today, it is expected that Chris Getz will be announced as the new head of baseball operations for the team. Uh, Not 100% clear on his title but that is expected. Don't know how much organizational change can really occur when the number three in command becomes the number one, but I guess I'm just not smart enough to understand it. In the meantime, the White Sox now sit at 53 and 81 on the year. That 500 record is still possible. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform that you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because Indeed does the hard work for you. They show you the candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post so you can hire faster. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash BlueWireSports. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash BlueWireSports. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWireSports. And support the show by saying that you heard it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWireSports. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need indeed. In the minors, the Knights were in Jacksonville to face the Jumbo Shrimp, so they got the day off as Hurricane Adelia wiped through the area. The Barons defeated the Montgomery Biscuits 7-1. Jose Rodriguez and Wilfred Veras both went deep, and Terrell Tatum doubled. 
Brian Ramos also doubled in the midst of a three-hit night. Matthew Thompson had a strong start, throwing six innings, allowing only two hits and one run while walking three and striking out two. The bullpen was strong behind him, with Halen Green throwing two scoreless and Fraser Ellard throwing a scoreless ninth. The Dash defeated the Rome Braves 2-1 at home. Bryce Willett singled in both runs on an infield single with an error. DJ Gladney and Michael Turner each doubled, and Brooks Baldwin had two hits. It was a good bullpen day for Winston-Salem, with Norhe Vera throwing two and two-thirds scoreless, Brooks Goswine followed with three and a third of his own scoreless. The one run was given up from Vince Vanelli, who was otherwise strong, before good old Johnny Ray got the save in the ninth. The Cannonballers took the night off as well, giving up the game to Mother Nature as the hurricane swept through the area. That will do it for this White Sox wake-up call. Subscribe to the Sox Machine podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash machine. If you enjoy our work and want to support, visit patreon.com slash machine as we have several different tiers of support starting at just $2 a month for exclusive content, ad-free podcast and website, and first crack at our new swag. Enjoy your Thursday and go White Sox.